Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Pockets for the week of September 8th, 2022. One of your hosts, Elijah, sitting with me digitally today as he was last week. Dan, how are you doing? Hello, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> You're definitely all right, yeah. So just so the audience is aware, the Achievers are aware, a little bit under the weather, right? Yes. You feel a little cold. So we don't blame you if 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 you're you know a little sniffly, a little little coffee. It's all fine. It's all fine. You have that perfect mic though. That will probably cancel all of that out anyways. So yeah, yeah. Very very nice mic. Um, how are you doing? Aside from the obvious cold. Doing doing good. Doing good. We had a a nice two hour recording yesterday of mm, our podcast. Nice so. and healthy two hours. Yeah, that was a long one, but it was fun. Uh, so, yeah. Let's let's tease a little. What was it? What was the main what was the uh, main theme? What, yeah, the main theme was uh, actually what we talked about on here uh, a week ago, uh, which was 343 and Halo. Uh, so we had a, a large discussion about that, mainly me oh, and Gage. I, I was just about, Halo. To, just about to yeah. say, was it uh, just you and Gage for an hour and a half yeah. talking about Halo? Because <laughs> I bet Pretty that's much, what it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, we'll talk about it a little bit, maybe Halo later. But that's been... Um, that's been something that like circled the rounds again. Like I feel like we talked about it, and then it, and then it, it just it's keep being brought up. And uh, I don't think I have anything new to add. Uh, I do think people are being a little. Hmm. How do I put this? When people were saying take I, the the one thing I was like, ah, it's a little too far. Is we were like take Halo away from three four three. Now, in some aspects, I agree. As in, like, I would like to see other Halo games, but. Do we? Do I think I need to like st at that point? And either, if if you have to take Halo from three four three, you you either just close the studio or drastically change something. I don't I don't think that would any of those things are going to happen though. But uh, but yeah, I I don't I don't really have anything to add. Everyone's been talking about that. Let's get in the show. Not so rapid fire starts us off with a bit of drama that's gonna be the theme this week it's gonna be drama everything was very dramatic this last week very very dramatic for uh, a lot of different reasons so let's get further one of them there seems to be a miscommunication or at least a huge miss out of flex glenn Schofield, the ceo of striking distance studios was in the twitter hot seat this week after a tweet by him seems to have been advocating extreme work hours let's read the actual tweet and we'll get into like basically the responses I only talk about the game during an event, of course, talking about Callisto Protocol. We are working six to seven days a week. Nobody's forcing us. Exhaustion, tired, COVID, but we're working. Bugs, glitches, uh, performance fixes, one last path through audio. 12, 15 hour days. This is gaming, hard work, lunch, dinner, working. You do it because you love it. This had everyone around Twitter, um, around the Twitter mom, Dunkiana, making light of extreme work hours leading up to Callisto Protocol's December 3rd release date. He later tweeted an apology reading, quote, Anyone who knows me knows how passionate I am about the people I work with. Earlier, I tweeted how proud I was of, of the effort and hours the team was putting in. That was wrong. We value passion and creativity, not long hours. I'm sorry to the team for coming across like this. What was your a reaction to this, Dan, over the week? Um, this was, this was kind of like, this lasted like a day and a half because, again, very dramatic week we've had. But what do you think? Yeah, I think... Like there was a lot of people that were uh, having discourse around this, which uh, I can completely understand. Uh, Christian was one of those. Uh, he was making an argument that it, this was advocating, you know, uh, these long hours to developers and it's not healthy and everything and completely understand that side of it. I think his original tweet, in my eyes anyways, Glenn is very passionate about his game and his studio because Dead Space was literally like a passion project for him back in the day. And he brought this back just to for that very reason. Like he loves that franchise and that genre. I think this comes more so from a side of passion from Glenn as opposed to like negative connotation. I don't think he intended that, although I'm sure people took it, you know, employees took it that way as well. Um, I think it's it's difficult, obviously, because it is twelve to fifteen hour days is not <laughs> healthy at all. Yeah, if you really uh, are working seven days for fifteen hours a week, that is, um, yeah, that is not good. You shouldn't be doing that. 
yeah. but uh, I'm of two minds of this. One, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't really think he meant ill will with this. I think he was kind of being like, we're working really hard. I, and, and crunch is inevitable with games, although people would like to pretend like we can like eliminate it. I, that's just not possible. If, if you're passionate about something, you're going to, you're going to find the hours. You know, I, I don't know if uh, I could speak for you, but for myself, I, I do a full-time job and this. So that's mm-hmm. I, my work weeks are, I mean, I work what 40 hours and then this is like six to 10 hours though. I mean, you know, so that's a, is that crunching? Who knows? But, uh, I will reiterate a couple things that I usually say, um, if you're going to work overtime, make sure you're paid for it. Unpaid overtime is garbage. So never do that. Aside from that though, if you're making bank, I'm not going to be the one that tells you not to do it. Yeah. It looks as if Crystal Dynamics was able to retain their IP of Tomb Raider and Legacy of Kane, while Eidos Montreal was able to keep control of their IP Deus Ex and Thief. More, um, they, I know they let, um, oh my god, I'm blanking on the name. I know they let the Hitman team keep a, oh my god, IO, right? Mm-hmm. Thank yep. you. And uh, they let them keep it. I think this is just further evidence of just them not, not caring. I mean, clearly, right? I'm sure there's some sort of back end, like maybe they get kickbacks, maybe they get royalties of uh, the original Hold Square, maybe. But uh, shocking that they just get to keep the IP. It's very interesting. I, I think Square just doesn't care about the Western I stuff agree. anymore. I agree. Yep. I agree. I, I think they are just like, sure, whatever. We have yep. Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, and then random JRPGs we can keep making. Yeah. Now, there's another drama one. Let's see. There seems to have been a very public mishap with a Bungie employee that we won't cover too much here since there isn't much of the way of hard news. But Elizabeth Pring was an investment workflow test engineer and a world systems test engineer at Bungie for about five months. She posted about being fired uh, after co-workers reported her social media account to Bungie's HR. Uh, I don't know how many times. I'm just going to say multiple times. Again, there's not too many hard news. That's why I don't want to cover too much. But everyone was talking about it. And you guys know I love Destiny, so... I'll bring it to the show. It began over a title dispute, seemingly at least, on whether she should be labeled as a test associate or a test engineer. So it seems that she was calling herself test engineer. Maybe other people had problems with that. And then she uh, 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 seemed to have angered someone in the company. She then treated a reaction to hearing that someone reported her Twitter account, which then I assume the same person then reported it again, and now she is fired. Um, I don't know if anything will come of this. I assume not. I don't know her, and also I don't know how Bungie's working uh, workflow uh, or HR system works at all, so I, I can't speak to any of this. I just wanted to bring it uh, to attention because this could be something later on. Yeah, yeah. I, like you're saying, I have no added info for this, so I don't yeah. even know. I, I saw yeah, some I, people jumping in. I, again, I don't know her, but but like I, I don't want to just be like, oh my god, Bungie's definitely in the wrong here. I don't know the situation, so I, I will right. wait and see. This is a quick one. There's a noise suppression being added to Xbox parties natively. All you have to do is use the options while you're in a party and turn it on. I was trying to find the date of this going live. I'm pretty sure it's live now as long as you're up to date. So yes. enjoy that. Okay, it is. Okay, perfect. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank God, because uh, I have a couple friends that I play Destiny with that there's lawnmowers in the back. There's I had someone vacuuming <laughs> the other day. I was like, what is going on here? Wow. Oh, yeah, I was broken down. <laughs> this next one I was broken down by the verge. The revamped PS5, which we'll be talking about later, is slowly being seen in the market. It has some small changes, like a smaller motherboard, different cooling, a different SSD enclosure. It also has joined Weight Watchers as it's dropped a whole pound since launching. This is one I, I kind of liked. Incredibly wisely, Microsoft announced a new version of the Elite Controller, Series 2. It's called Series 2 Core. The difference is quite a bit. The Core Controller is just that. As a Series 2 controller, it has a thumbstick adjustment tool and a USB-C cable. Of course, this means it misses the case, the paddles, additional D-pads, um, additional thumbsticks, and all that stuff. But to pass all that up, it is sitting at a 129.99 MSRP. Wow. If I'm being honest with you, Dan, I didn't even think about this as a possibility, which is a shame. Because it's kind of like an obvious one. Uh, very wise of them to release this. It's a great controller just by itself. Even if you don't care about paddles, it's just a great... I, I used mine for three years without paddles and i eventually just put them on and now i love them but if you don't care about paddles and you just want a premium controller 
Boom, one twenty nine ninety nine right there. Yeah, I and that's exactly me. I I don't use paddles, and I do use the Elite controller. I have the the Halo Infinite branded one. I do too. Uh, nice. Yeah, nice. this is a much better price though for people who don't care about that stuff. So that's yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, my only complaint is I f I hope that they've fixed some things with it because. I've had a lot of issues with uh, Series 2 controllers. Right. I've literally traded or um, I've sent in uh, for repair like three or four times the original mm. black one. And then now I have the Master Chief collection or Halo Infinite one that the B button sticks a bit on it. But I know if I send it in, I won't get yeah. a special edition one Correct. back. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually came into trouble with mine. I was pretty lucky. I had a bunch of people around me that had issues with their leak controllers. And my uh, Master Chief one was working great, but now the RB, I have to really jam it in to get a response. So that's one of those things where I'm like, uh, well, I guess this has turned into like a collection piece because I have another one. So I was yeah. like, all right, this is now the collector's piece. This will be put away and I'll be using my regular one from now on. Um, and also uh, important to note, they did tease a design labs for the Elite controller. Uh, no, no idea of pricing or anything. I didn't see anything of that. They just kind of teased it with a quick image very cool depends on the colors i might buy one of those because i have a problem <laughs> gun grave the third person shooter by red entertainment that was released in 2002 in north america for the ps2 is getting a sequel it's coming to game pass day one on november 22nd 2022 this was a quick one it looks pretty cool uh and it was one of those day one on game passes so i just wanted to do it rapid fire because i feel like this was a uh, something to highlight i will be looking forward to that because i've heard good things about gun grave all right, we'd like to begin the show with a single question that I pose to the guests, and that is, of course, what have you been playing? Dan, tell me, please. Well, uh, I started The Last of Us uh, Part 1, which I, I had said last week that I was going to uh, start playing. I've nice. got about two hours in or so. Okay. Uh, and so it's really fun actually going back to it because I haven't played since 2013 when the original came out on uh, on PS3. So it's literally like almost a brand new game at this point because I don't remember a lot of the stuff like my memory's terrible as it is. So right. uh, it's actually cool to go back through it. And I'm actually playing on quality mode instead of performance uh, mode, oh. which which is interesting because quality mode, it has a uh, 40 FPS instead of traditionally it's like 30 FPS. Yeah. And it's actually crazy how big of a difference that makes the 40 FPS actually feels really good. And like the controls feel really responsive as well. Uh, it's almost like they're doing something like similar to what uh, Insomniac did for Ratchet and Clank where the controls respond at 120 Hertz or 60 Hertz but the picture is at 40 hertz. So it's really cool. It, it feels really good, and it looks very good as well. So good stuff. I echo everything you said. Yeah, I'm playing it um, on uh, performance mode, though, and it's it's great. I'm, I love the game. This it, it proves that the Naughty Dog is just unique in every way. Uh, there's no, Even um, all this time later, almost 10 years, uh, there's still not quite a game like this in terms of both quality and all around um, skill, like art direction and character direction and just ev and just everything, environment of storytelling. It's everything is just, I mean, it's nearly perfect in every way, and I love it. Love Naughty Dog, and I was very excited. Played it as you. I only played it like in like 2014 or something when I got my PS4 for the first time. So it's been. Quite a minute, and I played it once, so this is also only my second playthrough, and it's very fun playing it again, especially with um, uh, much more of a critical eye than I did last time. Um, that's sure. that's really all I've been playing, though. I want to start playing um, playing on the name now, but there's a horror game on Game Pass that I wanted to play that uh, that everyone's raving about right now, so I'll be playing that over the week, and then. More Destiny, obviously. Um, they just recently uh, released a new mode called Eruption. That's very nice. It's kind of like kill streaks, where like the more kills you get, the more abilities you get. So like you can throw more grenades and get more supers, and it's so much fun. Stupid, stupid mode. It's so good. All right, let's get into rumor roundup for the week. Silent Hill, the 1999 survival horror game developed by Konami, has been everything but silent, especially this week. Countless pictures of the game have been leaked, as well as numerous rumors coming in. 
out about the game, adding more and more to this being a certainty. Possibly it will be shown at the Tokyo Game Show, but I did read on VGC that it is unlikely to be there, as it's something more smaller should be there. Uh, there are three images. Uh, I'm not a Science Hill guy, but I mean, they look good. That's really all I can say. Um, they look cool. I'll play this, but it's not one of the things I'm super excited for. I am excited for the people that are excited, but aside from that, I don't, I don't have anything to say about this. Yeah, agreed. I I don't have any experience with Silent Hill as a franchise, but yeah, it'd be cool to get a remake. Yep. All right, this is one that I just found like getting on, so I'm just gonna read from Comic.com, and I don't know the specific leaker, so I would say take it with a grain of salt, but I'll read it just in case. According to a Call of Duty leaker, The Ghost of Hope, Call of Duty 2024 will be set in early to late 2000s. That will cover Operation Enduring Freedom and the Iraq War. These two operations imply the game will directly pull from history and possibly address things like 9-11, desire to find and destroy Iraq WMDs, and much more. It's also worth noting that this is expected to be Treyarch's game, a team behind the Black Ops series, which, will always be set, uh, which has always been set in the past or in the distant future would also be the first game to be outside of the modern warfare franchise would take place in a relatively modern time period. Um, first off, Dan, you know what? I'm going to leave this off. I don't know if this is true or not. It doesn't seem like it is true. Uh, I doubt they have the, um, for lack of a better word, balls to, uh, take on a, such a recent story. Um, especially since we're still learning about things that were clearly lied about back then, but I would be fascinated to play this. I know this would uh, be a lot of people's, not very many people's bread and butter, but I would love to play something like this, uh, seemingly because I just love real history, things like this, although Call of Duty tends to bend the truth in some aspects, so. But I would, uh, I would like this, and they always do really good campaigns. So I would, I would like this. But again, I don't think this is probably real. What do you think? Yeah, it's it's interesting. It definitely hits a lot closer to home with uh, with it being more recent uh, war that people obviously remember quite a quite yeah. a bit about. If they really uh, do nine eleven, I mean that's that's something I remember. So like, oh, yeah. I can't imagine like Absolutely. a twenty something at that time playing a game like. A few years later, uh, you know, I uh, I don't know. I don't think they um I don't think they would do it, but I could be wrong. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and they, I guess they haven't shied away from stuff in the past, but it's been a while. It's like been a long Modern time Warfare. since no no Russian. And yeah, no, Modern Warfare. Too. I don't even think anyone's left. I I I've taught my head. I, yeah, I don't think anyone's left, so it would have to be someone pretty new to to work there to make something like that. But that is a good point. You know, no Russian was. I I remember that in the news. I remember like yeah. my dad and my grandparents like had like watching the news and and talking to me about it. like is, is this is like a thing you can do. And I was like, yeah, you can you can definitely do that. Um. Uh, and I remember, I remember back then too. It was one of those things where like, well, you didn't have to shoot anybody, <laughs> which was a funny thing. It was like we didn't make you shoot anyone; you, you just were there, which was uh, interesting. But um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, any last points with this? Yeah, and the, like that it, to go back to no Russian, like that made it so powerful when yeah. you went through that whole uh, mission, and then at the end you get the twist where yeah. you know yeah. it didn't matter at the end of the day. You just yeah. you know were complicit with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's crazy. Um, we will have to see. I I would I would love to see that. I know a lot of people would explode in fury if that did happen, but we will have to see. And remember, next year in theory, we're not getting a Call of Duty. So this would be uh, two years from now. Uh, so quick note: as this year seems to have been a resurgence in the TMNT IP in video games, reported on by the Gamer Nickelodeon after mentioning the Cowbunga Collection on their official website, states that there is a planned AAA project that will release in 2023. Nothing else was given about this. But apparently there will be a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games next year at some point. Very cool. No other details. And I'm not a big TMNT guy. I will like it from afar. Oh, wow. I, I really liked the uh, Shredder's Revenge, which I was a too. throwback to the 1989 version. Um, it was really great. 
Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested to see what this is. If this is going to be like more, you know, modern type of gameplay, or if they're going to do something similar to that uh, to try to get at, get at people's nostalgia again. Yeah, I I would see it unwise if they try to do a beat 'em up again, just because they've yeah. now released. I mean, ar- you know, arguably a very very incredible one in the form of uh, Shredder's Revenge. I would assume they're going to try and maybe do a linear type game just to see their chops. They did say triple A, and of course, coming from directly them, that could literally mean anything, but Hmm. we'll have to see. I would love a Batman Arkham Asylum, you know, size Hmm. TMNT. Not too big. I don't need a giant world. Just, Just small enough to, like, move around and jump around. There was that rumor a while back that Rock said he was working on that. Of yeah. course, they're working on Suicide Squad, but maybe someone else is doing it instead. Yeah, I remember those. Uh, that was a wild time where people were just like, it's a TMNT. No, it's Suicide Squad. No, it's not. Su- that was canceled. And then it turned out to be Suicide Squad was definitely yeah. a twist I wasn't expecting. Once upon a time, Retro Studios was making a chic spinoff game. Of course, chic. Um, from Ocarina of, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I drew reports from Did You Know Gaming, a number of details about the game codename either Project X or Sheik. Don't get too excited as X re, uh, a retro programmer Paul Tuzar had said this on the project. Quote, I see people, you know, commenting on that concept art on the internet and being like, oh my god, Retro was working on a Zelda game. That would have been so awesome. And like, I understand that feeling. But what they have to understand is it was not actually a Zelda game, and at no point was it really anything like Zelda. It was an experiment gone wrong that happened to be set in the Zelda universe, end quote. Uh, Tuzor says the prototype gameplay saw Sheik traveling across an overworld before being placed in battles against groups of wolves that could only de- uh, be described as, quote, a simplified version of whack-a-mole, end quote, using the Wii remote. <laughs> the project was canceled in April of 2008. Uh, so it sounds like it's a good thing this thing didn't come out if someone who worked on it said that was a really bad game that we tried to make and it just did not work out. I thought this was just fun. I love, love learning about canceled projects. And uh, Nintendo is usually very type lit about stuff like that. So it's always fun to hear things about that. And I, and I very much laughed when I when I read, quote, a slipified version of Whack-A-Mole. End quote. So I could just picture like you just waggle in this Wii remote while beating up these wolves is quite something to say the least. Wild. This next one is uh, something that I'm kind of excited for. Ubisoft um, never holds secrets. We'll be talking about that later, too, as we have more leaks coming in the way of Division Heartland details found by at Mr. Rebs on Twitter. Uh, The Division's free-to-play spinoff mode showed up on the unofficial Ubisoft store page. There are some details on modes. There's going to be a massive PvEVP in Storm Operations. Fight together in uh, 45-player Storm Operations against a group of dangerous rogue agents, an aggressive faction known as the Vultures, all while surviving a lethal virus. Prep the battlefield in PvE excursion operations complete pve missions gather gear activate alerts and prep the battlefield in incursion operations progress and adapt to survive plays one of six agents and select between three classes each match all with their own perks and skills so first off all of this very different from what you can expect in a division game two you do you can see if you'd want to click on that dan um over on forbes you can see some pictures and mm-hmm. uh it looks like a free-to-play game unfortunately uh, I love Division's kind of grittier aspects of the games, and um, yeah, it, it just it looks like a free to play game. I can't it's really almost, get. Go ahead. Sorry, it's no, almost no. like they added like cell shaded like aspects to the characters. Like it, it does look a little out of place. Like, yeah, weird. yeah. I, when I see this, I definitely don't think Division. And also, what are they wearing? Uh, maybe these are like cosmetics or something. But it just seems. I don't. I don't know. It seems. It just seems very strange to be like in joggers and be shooting things. You know, <laughs> but uh, maybe some armor would be wise. But yeah, I, I again, I was excited for it. Like when I read it out, it sounds fun. But then when I look at it, I'm like, ooh, that doesn't look great. But of course, gameplay is key. So if it's if it's fun to play, I, who cares what it looks like? Sure. That's everything for rumor around. So let's start the show. This first one's going to be a log one. I'm actually very interested to see what Dan has to say about any of this. Wow, so you thought whether Harry Styles spitting on Chris Pines was going to be the biggest drama this week. It seems you're wrong as we see a bit of a spat between two high-level executives of multi-billion dollar companies. Let's start at the beginning as a sort of refresher. 
At the beginning of the Activision Blizzard talks, yes, we're still talking about this. Phil Spencer, CEO of Microsoft Gaming, said publicly and privately to CEO of PlayStation, Jim Ryan, that Call of Duty will remain a multi-platform game after the acquisition goes through. He went on to say in a statement to The Verge, quote, In January, we provided a signed agreement to Sony to guarantee Call of Duty on PlayStation with feature and content parity for at least several more years beyond the current Sony contract, an offer that goes well beyond typical gaming industry agreements, end quote. This is something Microsoft has been trying to hammer home as multiple business regulators have been scrutinizing these purchases. This may seem to have some, uh, at, this may seem to some, sorry, as talking out of both sides of your mouths, as when uh, Bethesda was purchased, Starfield went exclusive almost immediately. Now, fast forward to now, we see a comment from Jen Ryan on an issue of Call of Duty given to Games in your shop is saying, quote, I hadn't intended to comment on what I understood to be a private business discussion, but I feel the need to set the record straight because Phil Spencer bought this into the public forum. Microsoft has only offered for Call of Duty to remain on PlayStation for three years after the current agreement between Activision and Sony ends. After almost 20 years of Call of Duty on PlayStation, the proposal was inadequate on many levels and failed to take account of the impact on our gamers. We want to guarantee PlayStation gamers continue to have the highest quality Call of Duty experience, and Microsoft's proposal undermines the principle, end quote. After this statement was released, it seems to have angered both sides of the console warrior enthusiast media figure saying both sides seem to be saying they dislike exclusive content on their other platform while making exclusive content and buying third-party exclusive content for their platforms. Dan. Yo. What the hell is going on with this? It's interesting. Uh, and we, we had some discussions on our podcast about Jim Ryan and his own issues that he's had over the last several months. Um, <laughs> but kind of putting that aside, uh, I think it's interesting because three years, the rumor online is uh, the three years in addition to what um, the contract currently is. Which was this at a, three years, right? Y- I'm sorry. Yes. I, did, I thought you were pausing there. I apologize. I, no, I, I interrupted you. No, you're good. Uh, it puts it about six years away. Yep. So that would put us through the end of the generation. And I feel like that's pretty fair. But also at the same time, Microsoft is in this to make money. So like if they're still selling 10 to 15 million copies of PlayStation 5 versions of Call of Duty, you know, six years from now, I guarantee you they will continue releasing them on PlayStation because you're not going to want to just say, no, I don't want all that money. Like that's so much revenue you get for $70 of copy times, however many copies, and they still get the benefit of having it free on Game Pass. So, yeah, I, it's it's kind of wild. I'm shocked that PR let this out be honest with you um maybe this is a direct shot against the bow against the acquisition purchase in general maybe i'm not thinking too high level about this or something but this just seems so first off from both sides it just seems so backwards like both of you are doing what you're accusing the other one of doing right phil you made starfield exclusive that's this is why it's a question Two, this wouldn't be a question if it wasn't Xbox. If it was either Nintendo or PlayStation buying them, we would already assume they're all exclusive, right? So exactly. that, that's the only reason yep. we're talking about this. And then yep. let's and then to go to Jim Ryan. What do you what do you mean? Like, why are you even uh, talking about this on? Like, I guess he did bring it into public forum, but like, did you really have to make it so dire? Like, it's it's Call of Duty. But like I understand, it is a big portion of your yearly. I mean, it's it's something that you can bet on, right? You know, you're getting your thirty percent cut when Call of Duty comes out. But is it that big a deal that you have to like come out here and be like, <laughs> I understood it as a private business discussion, but I need to set the record straight. Like, what are you doing, man? Like, you don't need to do this. You're PlayStation. Right? I, I don't really think you you should feel any worry against Call of Duty, which is one of the Again, it sells a lot. It's no small potatoes, as I feel like some people have been saying. But you are right around the corner of like trying to release things. I assume you have something in your catalog that's coming out soon that is going to try and beat Call of Duty. So make the thing that's better than Call of Duty, right? I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, both sides are 
both very silly. Uh, he's acting. Uh, uh, Phil Spencer's again acting like he's this messiah. He's like, no, everything's gonna be great when we buy these things. All right, it's, it's all gonna be better. The world's gonna be better. World hunger is gonna be solved when we buy Activision Blizzard. And then Jim Ryan's like, how would how dare you make anything exclusive? We've never bought anything and made it exclusive. Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy yeah. 7 remake. The, you know, so like I, I I read both of these and was like, what is this? Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, and Jim Ryan, I don't know. I, I, Jim Ryan, I just I don't understand him sometimes. I, I don't either. I think I think he's a button up businessman sometimes, and then he says stuff like this. I'm like, maybe they're again. I'm maybe I'm not thinking too high level. Maybe this is like something to try and disrupt the uh, pinnings in maybe Europe as they're looking closer into the dealings or something. I I don't know. But when I read this, I was like. Jim Ryan, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> like, you're good. Like, you, I do, yeah. I honestly do believe Call of Duty is not going anywhere for a while. So, you now yeah. have six years to figure it out. I mean, I feel like that's, again, yeah, a pretty reasonable, again, specific from a specific point of if you knew you bought them, you would have already pulled it. So, yeah. And, and FPS has always been something that Sony has struggled with, at least you yeah. know, recently, first party wise. For sure. For sure. So, yeah, this is a great opportunity to go figure that out. Create a studio or have one of your studios create a FPS that, you know, is a Sony brand. Like, that's, yeah, at the end of the day, that's what you got to do. It's time to polish up SOCOM. And it's coming yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's all we uh, have to say about that. Well, Ubisoft can't keep a lid on anything as we have information on their next two Assassin's Creed games. As of listening to this, you might already know that about these titles through the Assassin's Creed showcase that's um, happening on the 10th. Of course, a few weeks ago, we got information on Assassin's Creed Mirage, and now we have a uh, uh, we have the remainder of the games to go through. This comes the way of the usual major newsbreaker, Jason Schreier, Bloomberg, giving us some information on the next games. Important to note before going into these games that these two should be a part of the games as a service platform coming called Assassin's Creed Infinity. First, there is Codename Red, which is being developed by Ubisoft Quebec and set in Japan. And next, we have Codename Neo or Hex being developed by Ubisoft Montreal, set in the Holy Roman Empire, which will deal with witch trials. Neither of these two games will be out before 2024. And of course, Mirage was internally delayed to early next year. Again, as of uh, recording, of course, this is the 8th. We won't know. This will be debuting the 9th. So if you're listening day of, you still have a day. If you were listening past the 10th, maybe all of this has been confirmed. Who knows? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is all true because Ubisoft can't hold anything uh, close to the chest. So... Uh, what do you think about this as a fellow Assassin's Creed fan, Dan? What do you think? Yeah, uh, Jason Trier, pretty much the Assassin's Creed leaker, always. Yeah. Like, he always seems to get the scoop on them. Uh, but yeah, the, I think these sound really cool and different. Um, obviously, they uh, the Japan setting, I think people have been asking for for a long time. So that'll be kind of interesting to see that. And Holy Roman Empire with witch trials. That sounds really cool. It does. Like just very interesting. Um, and obviously, I was already on board for Mirage based on what people were saying about that. So, yeah, I think this might be like a, a re renaissance essentially of Assassin's Creed um, coming up here. Uh, obviously, started as a stealth action genre and then kind of went into RPG genre, and it seems to be going back to that stealth um, action. Um, original focus of the game so i'm very interested to to kind of see where these these can lead us me too i'm i am kind of hoping this is a renaissance um of the games which is aptly named because of uh, assassin's creed really started off this franchise i hope we are getting back to some sort of quality guarantee but again i don't want to go back to the days of unity the days of syndicate although i love syndicate where we're getting one every year. It, it really is just too much. And you can tell they can only do that for a very short amount of time. They can probably do that for like five years. But then past that, it becomes a mess. Things can't be made quick enough. And they're like half done. So I'm hoping since we already know about three of them, hopefully these aren't like the sign of things to come. Like, all right, here comes the next three games. Like, all right, the next six years, it's going to be a new Assassin's Creed. Every so hopefully that isn't it. I did see a tweet from Dream Park, actually, that reminded me of some cool things. 
He was just saying some things that he'd like to see, and he reminded me of the counter mechanics from Assassin's Creed 1, 2, you know. I really hope that comes back. That would be very satisfying, as we kind of nail that feel again. I've always hated that you couldn't stealth through things. Um, They got less stealthy throughout Valhalla. I mean, it's almost like not... It's pointless to kind of stealth in that game. Uh, so I'm hoping we do get the one hit kills. We hit like uh, the, the ability to counter. Like I never feel cooler as an assassin member as like I'm waiting for someone to hit me so I can kill them. Like that is, I feel so cool when I do that. So hopefully this is a return to that. And they already said Mirage, you know, there won't be, I, I believe they said there won't be levels or anything like that. So it's just straight up the game and you play it. So I, I'm excited. Agreed. Tencent is back in the news, this time in a particularly strange way. If you remember some time ago, there were rumors circling around Tencent looking to increase their stake in Ubisoft, potentially buying out the Gimop family of their shares in the company, which actually caused a 17% drop in the company's shares around that time. That seems to only be half right. Tencent, the Chinese media conglomerate, has purchased 49.9% of the Gilmot family's company, Gilmot Brothers Limited, controlling about 15% of the company. Part of this agreement... Tencent will pay 200 million euros to buy an indirect stake in Ubisoft. This also allows uh, Tencent to raise its direct shares to 9.99% from the current 4.5%, but will be capped at that 10%. However, as part of the plan, Tencent will not be able to sell its shares in Ubisoft for five years, um, and also Ubisoft will have priority selling, apparently, too. And additionally, they will not be able to increase their stake in Ubisoft beyond the 9.99% of Ubisoft's capital and voting rights for eight years. This is signifying that Tencent is interested in aiding Ubisoft from other hostile takeovers, you know, like the one Tencent wants to do. Hilariously, yeah. adding to the strange story, this actually was a downside for a lot of shareholders as most were expecting a nice buyout from someone buying Ubisoft. The stock has fallen more than 15% since the story has been live. So, so it is like good news wrapped around a lot of bad news for a lot of shareholders because it looks like Tencent has basically said no one will be buying Ubisoft for the next pretty much eight years. So they're safe for a while, but why would they do this? Right yeah. now, one of the reasons given was this. Um, let's this gives them an avenue both Tencent and Ubisoft into the Chinese market and the mobile space inside of that. I don't know if I believe that. I think there may be, of course, some, some deep 4D chests going around here. I think Tencent's just trying to get chummy with Ubisoft and maybe eventually um, hoping to buy them out. Now, the only reason they couldn't buy them out now is either they didn't think um, they could, which I don't believe. They, I'm sure they, they could if they wanted to, or maybe they're either overvalued or it's not the right price, or maybe there's they're trying to wait out some other people. I don't know. But I thought this was particularly strange because this is basically denying takeovers from everyone else to maybe buy Tencent time to do something. Maybe it's to buy them out. I don't know. I feel like this is kind of going over my head in some ways. And yeah. we, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, please uh, go ahead. I don't really... I'm trying to think of, like, why would they do this? You go ahead. Yeah, I... I think I think you may be spot on that Tencent's just trying to get their feet wet here with Ubisoft uh, before doing like a complete takeover, maybe in the next, you know, 10 years or something, uh, because it was a while back. I can't remember what year exactly, but Vivendi was trying yeah. to take control of Ubisoft. 2018, I think. Is that is that it? I believe yeah, so. And actually, it, Tencent actually helped Ubisoft back then. I believe they bought a 5% stake in the company. And denied them yeah. Vivendi the sale, which is like another like. Yeah. Were you, did you like eliminate competition there? Like, were you buying a pie so you could get it later? Yeah, and yeah, the GMO family back then was very adamant that they didn't want to have yeah. a hostile takeover, so they were trying everything they could to make sure that didn't happen. Uh, so they were successful then, but. Yeah, it is interesting um, now with uh, Tencent going after, you know, their company that owns Ubisoft. Uh, yeah, I think Weird. it's eventually a, yeah, they an own, avenue for them. They own, like, I want to say, oh, my God, I'm blanking. Yeah, they uh, they own, they're going to raise probably around that 10% mark in shares in Ubisoft. 
But now yeah. they own 49.9% of the company that owns the majority. Yeah. Like, it, this is really weird. This reminds me of when, when they had to get this the shares from, um, oh my God, we covered it last week. What was it? Oh, uh, FromSoft. So they oh, bought yeah. shares from FromSoft, but they also bought shares in Kawakami. So they now, they like have double, they, they have like ownership of partly of the owner and the developer, like it gets so strange when we're talking about this. So I think it's just more evidence that Tencent is just doesn't care and will just aggressively just spend money to to get like what whatever future they want, whether it be yeah. some sort of di- diversification in medium or uh, slowly cut pieces of the pie. Where they're trying to like segment themselves in this kind of post giant acquisition era that we find ourselves in the game industry. I don't know, but this really did stump me. I I can't think of a particularly great reason for this other than maybe they're buying time. I don't know. Yeah. Splitgate. I love talking about this game. Splitgate, the highly popular arena shooter akin to the OG Halo days of multiplayer, made a big announcement pertaining to the continuation of the game's life. I found this very um uh, nice. I, I liked that they kind of announced this. Let's get into what the announcement is. So, uh, quote, to our Splitgate fans, we could not be here without your support. We pride ourselves on trying to be as community focused as possible. We strive to improve our game and build a better future for Splitgate because of the enthusiasm of our fans. Thank you. Splitgate achieved a level of success that we could not have anticipated that and that few indie games are fortunate to reach. Oh, sorry. Um, that initial success brought an opportunity to turn what started as a college dorm dream project into a AAA game that could stand toe-to-toe with shooters from the biggest publishers in the industry. Uh, I'm going to skip down a few. We are in a uh, in a way uh, bailing water while also trying to keep everyone who bought a ticket to board our ship happy while also trying to turn our boat into a rocket ship <laughs> after careful consideration and much deliberation. The 1047 Games team has determined that in order to build the games the game fans deserve and to build it into a way that isn't trying to retrofit and live operate an existing product we're ending future development of splitgate we're turning our attention away from iterative smaller updates and going all in to focus on a new game in the splitgate universe which will present revolutionary and evolutionary changes to our game it'll be a shooter it will have portals and it will be built in unreal Engine 5 oh and it will be free um uh, but, and then they go on to note that on uh, September 5th there'll be a new battle pass that will be free as like a thank you and then past that there will just be smaller updates and bug fixes and things until they release their next game. And they end it with this is a see you soon and not a farewell. And quote, Splitgate launched May 24th, 2019 on PC and later coming to consoles on July 27th, 2021. We really found its footing in the multiplayer space being compared to a return to OG Halo multiplayer experience. Dan, did you ever play Splitgate? I did, yes. Uh, and it's interesting that you say uh, return to OG Halo multiplayer experience because uh, I pretty much liken it to Halo 4's multiplayer experience where oh. you have all of your abilities, um, jetpack and all of that. It, it feels like very, very similar to Halo 4 to me, uh, control-wise. Uh and it's very interesting because a lot of these developers at Splitgate actually came from 343 uh, shortly after a, a Halo 4's development and went on to make Splitgate. So it does seem like they were taking heavy inspiration from it, obviously, because like the game has double kill, triple kill, and like the weapons. I think you're you're muted, I think. Oh yeah, I am. Sorry about that. Um, You're good. Uh, yeah, heavy inspiration is definitely a way of putting that. <laughs> like, yeah, massive giants, basically same thing. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it honestly, I'm surprised that Microsoft honestly hasn't tried to go after them because, like, even their gu- their weapon designs, like the battle rifle, is yeah. literally called the battle rifle, yeah. and the battle rifle in that game is almost a near identical to Halo 4's battle rifle, mm-hmm. which is kind of insane. Yes, but, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it, the game's a lot of fun, so I I'm interested. It. Yeah, I loved that. Yeah. I only played it for a little bit, but I had a great time. You did bring up that it is close to Halo 4. I would probably agree with you. Um, I That is probably rose-colored glasses. I'm so short, akinning it to like an OG Halo, uh, because it's, it's just been so long since i played this game's um, so that's just the easiest comparison. But yeah, it probably is closer to like Halo 4. Uh, the portals was so fun. 
so fun. Oh my god. Who knew, like, just adding a portal in a game would just Im- immediately make it ten times more fun. I would love, like, sitting somewhere and, like, putting a portal next to me and then putting it, like, down a hallway and then staring through a portal and shit. I mean, come on. Like, that that, that was dumb fun. But, um, yeah. but yeah, it's it's exciting. I'm, I'm just, this is one of those things where, like, yeah, I'm excited for this. I, I, I love that they came out and just kind of was frank and were like, you know, we kind of want to make a bigger game. Yeah. So, they, they just, you know they just said crazy? It, which was nice. You know what's crazy? What? Halo Infinite's Forge that's coming out can literally make this. It can make uh, portals, and people have already started like experimenting with that in the early build that's been leaked, so that'll be interesting as well. That, that will be, that. because it will be called split gate mode or something. I will say, yeah. um, I, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff from Forge like online. That is not one of them. I've seen crazy ones where like guns can yeah. shoot vehicles and rant like crazy yeah. stuff. Like I've seen toy. Someone made Toy Story. I was like, what? Like, yeah. They like there's some crazy stuff, and it's that makes it even more shame that they had to delay it. So I can't wait for Forge to come. We see a large figure in the PlayStation engineering side retire. Masu Masasuyos Oh my god. I had this like translated prior to this to try and nail it. I already forgot it. It was Masayosu Ito. Behind a lot of engineering of the PS4 Pro, PSVR, and PS5 is retiring October 1st. Ito originally came to work for Sony before moving to the PlayStation Vision in 2008 to lead hardware engineering. According to The Verge, the majority of the engineering was still will still be helmed by Vice President Hideki Nishishino, who reports to Jim Ryan and Lin Tao will be taking over Ito's role as Deputy President and Represent Director of Sony's Japan Operations. Now let's do some fun speculation. Undoubtedly, Sony is close to finalizing a PS5 Pro design, meaning that may have been the last project Ito has worked on, and to get even more speculative that there may be the very, very beginnings of the next generation in the PlayStation family of consoles, the PS6, as these talks generally take up at least five years of refining. So, this was just a cool thing to, that I saw. It is interestingly timed as I'm almost positive they have a finalized PS5 Pro design. They, I don't know, I highly doubt they have some, like, in production or anything, but they probably have some lasting designs that they're almost done finalizing. I'm assuming that was his last project, and once they have that, like, fully done they'll be probably moving on to some sort of ps5 slim and ps6 uh design what would what say you yeah i i still think it's fascinating to to speculate on when the ps5 pro is going to come out because obviously ps4 pro came out three years into the development of ps4 and Honestly, I'd be surprised if that happens this gen because of the shortages. Like, you, it's still very hard to get PS5s right now. Yep. And, you know, three years would be a year, about a year from now. Uh, I, I don't know that they're going to be caught up by then to be able to, you know, say, hey, here's a new SKU. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, like, when the Pro hits and, like, when the uh, Pro version of Microsoft's console comes as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I I would imagine if we have to question one of these um, companies being able to make a new system or not, Sony would be the one that I would have to question. Like, are you able to like throw around the money to be able to really engineer one? I think the answer is yes because you know Microsoft can. So if they release series, let's just call it Series Y. If they release something called Series Y, that forces PlayStation to make one. They can't just let them release a whole brand new console with all the bells and whistles it's all fancy for like what let's say oh my god this even sounds crazy i don't think this would happen but like let's say it's like 600 bucks and the series x might get like a slight price reduction to like 400 bucks and then the series s is still like the same 299 that if that does happen they straight up just can't they have to like have something to compete so i think if if that situation does amass they probably have to bite the bullet and be like we're only going to be able to make like five million maybe less but we'll have it on the market yeah for sure fun to speculate yeah firewall ultra sticking with playstation firewall ultra has been announced the sequel to 2018's hit psvr game firewall zero hour was announced via the playstation blog it will of course be launching on the psvr 2 it gave some details on what to expect from the game this is via the blog quote Set five years after the original game, the contractors and locations you've grown to love have evolved and moved into the next generation. 
Since PSVR 2 offers a much higher level of visual fidelity with 4K HDR, we've completely remade all character models. The maps have also seen a complete overhaul with new areas and new textures. There will also be new, new locations and contractors, but it wouldn't be a firewall game without the weaponry equipment, which will also feature a much deeper level of customization. We've been listening to our community over the past four years, and we're proud to announce that you'll be playing Firewall Ultra on dedicated servers. You are also ad adding rounds to the game, so each match will be the best of three, and we're adding an entirely new PvE experience. Plus, we have a f future content plan post-launch, such as new contractors, maps, and weapons, end quote. No word on release date, of course, because we still do not have any information on the PSVR 2 release date. I don't have much to say about this because I'm just more excited about the VR 2 than anything else. And I never played Firewalls VR 2. I knew it was a great game because around uh, at that time I was working at GameStop. That thing used to sell. Whenever we got it, someone bought it. So it was very popular, at least in my eyes. And I know people liked the game. So this just seems like an evolution of what the original one was so and i'm excited again i'm hoping whenever the psvr 2 comes out i can just first off it's easy to use and then second off i can just play all my vr1 games that's that's really the only thing i kind of want to know now because we've talked about this for so long and we still don't have a release date or price or price yeah <laughs> i think that's the key like well, yeah. how much is this thing gonna cost am i gonna be interested in picking this game up i don't know I'm assuming 500 with like a game or something. And then maybe they can get away with 400, although they did just raise the price of all their PS5. So maybe they're like, eh, we're, yeah. we're not going to, we're, we're making money off this thing. We're not trying to sell this thing at no loss. Xbox is looking to experiment with the home design layout of their systems as laid out on the Xbox wire. This is very early, so only a random set of alpha skip ahead members. So like the earliest you can possibly be in their alpha program will see any changes for now. Some things to look out for from the Xbox wire goes, quote, key updates in the first round of preview updates. The new jump back in row gives you quick access to your most recently played games and apps. Very good idea. Easily access important system apps like settings, store, search, and my games and apps with their own dedicated tiles on Xbox Home. Consistent design and visual identifiers with updated layouts to keep the experience familiar. When you scroll down, you'll see curated categories and recommendations tailored to your gaming preferences. An update to, this, to the UI is said to be in 2022, so this is no time early. You can see a little glimpse of pictures... If you uh, go over to the Xbox Wire and find this, um, it isn't too different, especially if um, you're not familiar with the Xbox uh, UI. It might even look the same to someone that isn't uh, super familiar with it. So, uh, so far, though, that jump back in uh, as someone who uses Xbox a lot, love it. I just that, that just sounds like a, 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 the PS4 media bar kind of situation where like your most played stuff is just right there in front of you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm digging it. The p first picture looks nice. Uh, settings, having a dedicated thing is, uh, it should have been there. I don't know why that's just not coming. Thank God that I could just go there instead of hitting the Xbox guide going, you know, finding it. And like, it was such a bad idea that that is an app on the Xbox and not in just an internal thing I can just click. But aside from that, I'm loving all this. Yeah, and my games and apps that you click a lot because like that's your where all your stuff is home to. Uh, it's great to have that uh, dedicated there. Mm -hmm. the, one of the cool features with this update as well that I thought was cool was um, they have new uh, default install location uh, features. Mm -hmm. So you can tell it that you want, you know, for instance, backwards compatible games like Xbox One, 360, and original Xbox games to default to uh, external hard drive as opposed to using your SSD storage because huh. obviously you don't need SSD storage for those older games. So that's a kind of a nice quality of life feature as well. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so I actually missed that. That's actually pretty cool. Um, yes. I would love, yeah, I would love all that. I, hmm. Yeah, I don't have anything to add. I, I hope this was quicker. I've been wanting a new UI I mean, really, since the Series X launched, when it it was cool, it did it, it it was cool to have a Series X, but it did feel like a little less. Uh, the UI, you know, everything kind of feels the same at first until you start playing games. So I've been wanting this for a while, and hopefully we'll, we'll be in this soon. Sure. 
this was a something I read, and I was like, okay. I, I was following it, and I'm like, I need to talk to Dan about this. In a press release for Battlefield, it was revealed that Ridgeline Games, a studio created last October under EA led uh, under EA, sorry, led by Halo co-creator Marcus Lateau, will be debuting with quote a narrative campaign in the Battlefield universe. End quote. The Washington-based studio will be collaborating with Dice and Ripple Effect on the Battlefield franchise. This announcement comes behind a sort of restructure of the franchise, as back in December, it was announced by EA that they want a quote connected Battlefield universe. End quote. Whatever that means. Which saw Dice's former general manager Oscar G- uh, Gabrielson to leave EA, leave in quotes. While well, Vince Zampella took over the position of overseeing the franchise, the golden child of EA, I'm sure. Battlefield 2042 launched in 2021 to little fanfare as it's seen as mostly unfinished and uninspiring, making another failing in the Battlefield franchise. Dan, I wanted your opinion on these things because one, how many people do we need working on a single Battlefield game for it to be good, right? Two, what is going on with DICE that they can't make these things happen? They, they, they're usually given pretty um a- apple opportunity to make battlefield work and for me at least the last three battlefields have been complete misses uh in terms of both quality of campaigns uh there are certain aspects i did like about um battlefield um fives but aside from a few i i didn't i didn't find it very interesting and then uh i've not enjoyed a multiplayer experience from battlefield since bad company 2 that is the last time I've oh, even wow. had it. Yeah, that is the last time I've had a very, like, I sit down, I've played it for weeks, I enjoyed my time. I didn't just play a couple days, like, throughout a weekend. I, you know, it, I feel like every time I pick up a Battlefield, it just, like, it just feels off, especially this latest one where I, I was playing it. I was like, this doesn't even feel finished. Like, I feel like it's just kind of like they made the map, they made your character, and they gave you a couple guns, and there there's the multiplayer experience. Like, we don't really have fleshed out modes. There's no, like, ribbons like there were in the other battlefields, so, like, you don't really even feel cool when you kill people. Like, like when you get a kill, it just comes with a little name, and it says plus 100, and it's like, this isn't satisfying at all. Uh, but uh, do you have any experience with uh, Battlefield, and does this even excite you? Yeah, uh, actually, like, me, uh, me, Gage, and Christian have recently uh, linked back up to play Battlefield 2042, Ooh. and actually, we had quite a bit of fun with it. Like, they have made a lot of updates since launch um, about a year ago, so the game has gotten better. Um, obviously, they have a lot of stuff that they announced for the future, like the return of the class system, which they should have never went away from the class system. That's literally like a pinnacle of Battlefield, but... Um, hopefully that will come sooner rather than later and that will help out 2042 as a, uh, in regards to the new studio Ridge Ridgeline, um, they're, I, they're actually building a brand new campaign experience. Uh, it's a brand new game. It's not even related to 2042 at all. Um, and dice will continue working on the, you know, mainline battlefield games moving forward. So they'll keep working on 2042 and whatever's next, but this is going to be in addition to that, like a, a separate campaign from Marcus Lato and his studio, which I'm very interested to see what Marcus does. Uh, obviously he's the father of the yes. master chief built the master chief from the ground up. So um, very interested so to I'm, see what they can do. I'm glad you brought this up because I found that confusing because even in the press release, they're not super clear um, on what they're going to be doing. So these are going to be two different releases. Yeah. So uh, what Marcus's team is working on is just a, a campaign experience. It's a standalone campaign experience. It's not related to 2042 at all. Um, and then dice will continue working on 2042 and then whatever's after 2042 i guess um which who knows what that's going to be uh but i think they still have a lot of work to do on 2042 before they Mm. look to the the next thing i guess i must admit Um, i'm i must admit i'm I'm a tiny bit embarrassed here because what how i read it is the they are collaborating on the next battlefield game so you're telling me that the uh that ridgeline will make a it will be called battlefield star wars and it's going to be a straight up just a game with no multiplayer 70 whatever dollars and you buy that and you do not get multiplayer with it i'm not sure if it's going to include multiplayer or not but they announced it as like a campaign uh specifically so i would imagine it's just going to be a uh like 
story based thing. Um, obviously, 2042 is a multiplayer focused thing. So maybe they figured, well, we already have this. Do we really need another multiplayer suite? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is two separate things. And uh, Vince Sempella, essentially, everyone reports to Vince Sempella. Yeah. So Dice. Dice reports to him. Marcus Lato's team reports to him, um, et cetera. Uh, it just seems like they just want to expand the Battlefield universe, I guess, to as many avenues. I don't know. So I'm curious I'd- if if this is going to go the way of Ace almost make good in the uh, uh, EA's eyes or maybe even uh, Dice and Ridge Lines here. Maybe, they're, maybe in three to four years, we're going to get uh, Battlefield 2042 um re-release or something or maybe it's going to be an expansion or something and maybe you maybe you, the by that time the multiplayer mode is fully revamped and and they'll have a campaign with it uh and maybe there'll be like some new guns or something i'm I'm curious if that's going to be or is it literally it their ridgeline will i in like four years there will be something called battlefield ridgeline will develop it and then we will play a st- standalone experience and no multiplayer. Uh, I'm I'm curious. I I, don't, I actually don't know which one that they're gonna do. Yeah. Let's see. And then, yeah, here's a quote. Quote. It's a great honor, and this is from um game director and head of Ridge Line. And it's a great honor to have the opportunity to collaborate with Dice and Ripple Effect and lead the charge on expanding the narrative storytelling and character development opportunities in the Battlefield series. That doesn't really tell us anything. Science, uh, yeah, there's nothing really to garner too much. I, I'm making sure I didn't miss anything. Vince Ampella just says, "quote We're continuing to invest in the future of the franchise by bringing in new talent and perspectives." Uh, we with Marcus and his team, we're joining a world class global team. We have already in place Battlefield is the strongest position to succeed. End quote. All right, let's hope. Um, let's hope it does succeed, Vince. <laughs> That's the news for the week. Now we have date updates to go into. Now, this is Game Pass week, of course. So remember, we go over everything coming to Game Pass. And let's start with uh, available as of recording. Disney Dreamlight Valley Founders Edition Cloud Console and PC. This is a day one on Game Pass. I was very confused about this game. So apparently this is a this is, uh, of course, it says Founder Edition. So it's obvious now. I didn't know it was. So apparently this will be a free to play game that will come out a year from now. And right now you can pay for the Founders Edition and get it early and, and all that stuff. So you're, so you, apparently it seems pretty complete. I hear people playing it and enjoying it. I saw someone play, played it for um, over like 20, 30 hours. So oh, wow. this doesn't, it doesn't feel like early access to me at least. Now it does have an Animal Crossing like experience. So I, I assume there's a lot to do uh, to work it out. And apparently there are events as well. I think, um, you can like hang out with Wally or something in the game right now. So, so the, it's a it's a it's a much bigger game than I took it as first. So check it out if Disney Dreamlight Valley sounds uh, good to you. It's a basically Disney meets Animal Crossing. Opus Magnum PC. I have to read this. <laughs> ID and Xbox title. An open ended puzzle game from Zachtronics, the creators of Shenzhou IO, master the intrinsic physical machinery. Of the transmutation engine, the al- the alchemical engineer's most advanced tool, and use it to create vital remedies, precious gemstones, deadly weapons, and more. Would not have guessed any of that from the name Opus Magnum. <laughs> Train Sim World Three console and PC idea at Xbox that's going to be available day one on Game Pass. Um, it is a train sim, and it's going to be in a world. This will be coming soon to Game Pass. Ashes of the Singularity Escalation PC. It's an idea to Xbox title September 13th. DC League of Super Pets. The Adventures of Crypto and A's Cloud Console and PC September 13th. Wow. I'm surprised that is going to be on Game Pass. So you suck at parking. Cloud Console and PC idea to Xbox September 14th. Available day one on Game Pass. Despots Game. Console and PC idea to Xbox September 15th. That's a day one on Game Pass title. A very exciting game coming up. Metal Hellsinger PC, Xbox Series S and X, ID at Xbox September 15th. Available day one on Game Pass. You would have heard me and Alex, uh, the former co-host, uh, expounding about this game. Metal Hellsinger is a rhythm FPS brimming with diabolical enemies, powerful weapons, and metal music. Strike terror into hearts of demons as you fight your way through eight hells on an infernal journey to achieve the pierce of goals. Vengeance. It looks very cool. It's basically Doom um, set to uh, a rhythm game. It looks very fun. 
Uh, and we covered that last week. That should be everything. Let's go to what's leaving. It's a pretty big list, so get ready. So, everything that I'm about to read is leaving. Now, it's leaving September 15th. Remember, 20% off until it leaves. So, you have to buy this before the 15th. I want to save 20% off the game. A Plague Tale Innocence Cloud Console PC. Aragami 2 Cloud Console PC. Bug Fables, the Everlasting Sapling Cloud Console PC. Craftopia Cloud Console PC. Final Fantasy 13, sadly, cloud, uh, sorry, console and PC is leaving. Flynn, Son of Crimson, Cloud Console and PC. I Am Fish, Cloud Console and PC. Lost Worlds, Beyond the Page, Cloud Console and PC. Mighty Goose, Cloud Console and PC. Skatebird, Cloud Console and PC. And The Artful Skate, Escape, Cloud Console and PC. Everything will be leaving September 15th. So if you want your 20% off, make sure to buy it. Another quick one, Gundam Evolution will launch September 21st for PC, November 30th for PS5, Series S and X, PS4, and Xbox One. And then I saw Atomic Heart was delayed to early 2023, and that is the news for the week. Of course, we end the show with a question, just like I begin the show. And of course, what's queued up for the week? That's when I asked Dan, what does he have queued up? This course, to be a book, a comic book, a podcast, a manga, if you're row. Um, a TV show, a movie, really anything. What, Dan? Do you have queued up? Yes, yes. Uh, so I think I said last week I was watching Midnight Mass, which yes. I finished. That uh, it was great. Uh, I have actually now started um, Haunting on Hill House, which is the one before that, or two before that, one or the other, uh, by the same person who created uh, Midnight Mass. So I'm starting that, and I'm very excited to start that. Uh, and then maybe uh, play some some more of The Last of Us of Part One, of course, and uh, the yapping event in Halo Infinite right now. It's, what is it? What is I, I see the yappings. I, I see the memes that the Halo account. Will, what is this? Yes, it's a uh, it's their event that's going on the next two weeks. Um, it's a free ten tier um, event pass where you get a bunch of like cosmetic rewards um, through that. Um, it's kind of like a smaller. Uh, event i guess um like they normally have like the fracture yeah, the fracture um, i remember yeah yeah so it's a smaller version of that but uh the game modes that are with that are actually really fun uh they're all big team battle game modes so they're all new ones um there's uh fiesta B big team battle fiesta there is big team battle fiesta like points on the map i forget what the name of the mode is uh, con uh it's like control but not it's yeah. like um yeah it gets fine to be i it, god it's killing me yeah. too because i liked that mode i don't remember yeah. it, though. it is fun but uh yeah the yapping stuff is a lot of fun and of course with Fiesta on BTB, it makes it fucking awesome. Oh, I'm sorry if I can't cuss on Oh, you, how fucking that. dare you cuss? You can't cuss on him, man. Okay, the fuck's wrong okay. with you? It's really awesome to have Fiesta I can tell my on wife, BTB. this fucking guy just cussed on my podcast. I can't believe this. Because <laughs> Fiesta on BTB, you can literally spawn it. It spawns in like wasps and banshees and uh, scorpions and all kinds of stuff. It's okay, so much so, so it's 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 as madness as it was in 4v4. Except I I remember yeah. played i played fiesta the first event they had and I, I had fun it was just back then like there was just like nothing else to do so like it was either that or, yeah. or not did they fix some um, are the challenges still the same way that's the one biggest gripe i think i had with halo is like you had your challenges but only four were active at a time and like sometimes they were not the challenges you needed so like so is that still a thing so yeah so the challenges are, are similar but uh... they have made but they have made the challenges. I will say, since I don't know when the last time you've played, but oh, the challenges launch basically. Okay, the challenges since then are way better. They're okay. way easier now because there was some really crazy challenges yes. back then that I was like, really, come on. I, I uh, remember what I think it was like. Get um, it was like a specific weapon, and it was like get like twenty kills. I'm like, what? Yeah. I gotta it's like. Beeline yeah. to the gun, take it, and oh god, it's off. It's a lot better now. A okay. lot better. Okay. And yeah, that's some that's coming from someone who completes all the challenges every week to get those rewards every I single week. I I I was so. doing good for that first like four to six weeks. Yeah. I was like, I can't I couldn't stop playing. I was like, this is so much fun. And then yeah. slowly you just kind of burn out. I, I wanna go back. I I, I very much want to like play infinite again. Because, like, these things I see, even though I, I have a million criticisms of Infinite, 
that saw that gameplay is so solid. So I really, it's been a while. I mean, it's almost been, um, a year, like to the day. Um, of course, I'm a couple months off, but right. I'm excited to to play it again because it is almost going to be. It won't be completely different, but it'll be a little different. I'm excited, and I know. Um, well, that's not until like six months from now, but they're going to add that new gun, all these things too. Mm-hmm. So it's time to play. Yeah. Um, what am I going to be doing? I will be doing a movie today. Don't know what the movie was. Oh, oh, I meant to open the show with this. I forgot. Damn, I am going to be on Large Popcorn. Um, oh. so check out Large Popcorn. Well, I had, I, uh, ooh, I don't think I can, I, I can't say the movie, but it is, it was a very fun movie. I, I enjoyed it. So check out Large Popcorn. That is Large Popcorn Pod and any podcast service. Check that out. That was a very, very good time, uh, with ISO Christian. Loved that. That was yeah. so fun. I'm um, gonna have to grill Christian to ask him what that movie is. <laughs> I could tell you off air. I don't know if, I, I, I no, don't think I'm I could say it. Um, no, I'm kidding. What else? Uh, oh, I'll be playing um, Last of Us Part 1. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, I have that finished by the time I record next week. And then I got to piece together some people. I want to do a spoiler cast because, of course, I wasn't doing podcasts when this went out. So I want to figure out some people who would want to do a spoiler cast with me because I, I need to talk about this game. So aside from that, more Destiny, of course. Iron Banner's happening. I'll be playing that the weekend. Uh, I need to finish Last of Us Part 1 so I can play... Um, two games that I've been wanting to get to, which is the horror game that I spoke about later. I'm still blanking on the name. I, I can't believe it. Um, and then uh, there was another Game Pass game. Order. Oh, no, no. I want to try Prey. I know this is random, yes. super random, but I want to play Prey. So I have it downloaded. So And I forgot it's FPS boost. So like that's even more of a reason to play. I've completely forgot that they like FPS boosted a lot of Bethesda games. So I'll be trying that out because... Uh, I saw my dad playing and he's like new game plus already and he's like halfway through the game and he was like using the glue gun to like climb up walls and I was like okay all right this seems pretty cool so I should try it um so I'll, great. yeah I'll be playing uh over the weekend pray the indie title and then again hopefully I have last of us part one finished by hopefully Sunday Monday time and then I uh, spoiler cast is up in the air I it'll it'll take me time to find people for that that's the show for the week thank you so much for joining me dan hopefully you feel better um you did say it's not COVID, so no one worry it's nothing crazy yeah. <laughs> it just sounds like a little cold so you you should be yeah. all right just shove in the vitamin c's and d's those are the most important if you have yep. if you have corset in the hand throw that in your body as well oh look at that he's already, he's already on top of it what do you need well you don't need me you don't need me you don't need me you got this you're going man uh, yeah. Aside from that, thank you so much, Cheevers, for listening to this week. So this was a short one, but there wasn't that much news. So this is a, a weaker week. But uh, remember, that should be it. Yeah, so remember, go Chief. <laughs>